Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com. Today I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to walk through this easy X-Tool project. So if you're new here, I speak quickly so you can go to your YouTube settings, the little cog, go to playback speed and choose any of the ones above the word normal in order to slow this down. Any of the below the word normal, that'll speed it up. So just choose anything above normal to slow it down and use the pause button. So if you're new, you've already connected your Xtool device to your software, so open your software. Yours won't have the recent projects here, but you come up here to new project and you can import or drag in an SVG. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second, but you wanna wait until your device is recognized. You can see there's no green dot on my M1 Ultra because I'm not connected. So I am connected to the P2, so I'm going to come over here to switch device, and now you can see I'm going to switch this and connect to my M1. You can see I also have the Safety Pro installed. I am also using an Air Assist on the M1 now. Love it. Super easy, the Smart Air Assist. So you saw there, I just dragged in a file, but you can also come to the Xtool menu setting and do Import Image for SVGs. Super simple. Now, as you can see, this is all grouped together, so we want to ungroup it. I'm just going to make one of these. One of the problems I see a lot of people are doing is they'll group this all together, and maybe they'll name it like not doing this one or whatever, and they'll lock it and turn off the image. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But for this one here, because we ungrouped everything, we need to start messing with this grouping again. So you can see in the layers panel, we have a lot going on. Every one of these tick marks, the numbers, each of the letters, all of that is separate. So I'm going to highlight the outer piece and change that to cut. Highlight everything, deselect the outer piece, and you can tell because in the layers panel over here, under the objects, you can see that's the only one that is not selected. Now I'm going to just group all that together. It's already set to engrave and this will be called engrave. Doesn't have to be difficult. I'll make this one cut. Okay, so now our file is ready for settings and materials and you can come up here to 3M Basswood, which is what I'm going to be using, and you can choose that and have the settings entered. However, if you are new, I highly recommend you don't do this. Okay, come up here to the canvas, create a new canvas, hit the plus sign, and call this one test. Now I have an extensive video on my channel here, but as a refresher, or if you're new, this is how you create a test. Create a shape, a circle, a square, a heart, and now you're going to, instead of going over here to the menu item that'll create a test grid, which is right here in the applications, you want to first choose the type of processing you want, scoring, engraving, or cutting. So for this one, I'm going to choose engrave, then go to the application's material test array. Now this looks daunting. There's a whole bunch of numbers. How do you know what to set it as? Hit cancel. When we load something in up here in the user defined material, let's choose basswood, you're going to get settings. Now, I don't care that this already set the settings. Click on that and it will open the test grid X tool has done. This is how we set those parameters. This is a smart processing example because you know it's not going to burn through the wood. You know you have some starting point, but every laser is different. So we're going to use each of these numbers. Now you can always just click on this and try each one, but that's wasted material. So instead I'm going to mimic their numbers over here and hit done. That is an engraving file. Don't ungroup it. You can add a rectangle and a little like circle to put these on a jump ring later. That rectangle would be processed as a cut, and so would the circle. And that way you can have this material test repeatedly, right? So the circle and rectangle, highlight both those and hit cut, then the rest of them will process as normal, okay? So again, you would do a cut test if you haven't done one already. Again, here's our parameters. How do we do it? We hit C on our keyboard, we create a circle, we indicate before we come over here, we have to indicate cut, then we put in our exact settings that they are using for our cut, and process that at the same time. 
Okay, so even if that first one doesn't cut out, you can actually just run that cut for the rectangle outside of it again. Okay, so back to our project here. I am going to mask my uh, wood, which means instead of the default setting, I am actually gonna go a little bit more in depth. So instead of this 40 at 130, I'm gonna come in here and show you. See, when we hit engraving, you see how that other thing came up? We're just going to change right here. Okay, you don't have to worry about this picture. You just have to change in the numbers. You can click on this and it will change the numbers or you can type right here, move the slider. There's a lot of ways we can change it. Now, if you wanna do the cut, the cut is the same way. So mine, I have a sticky set of basswood. I don't want a lot of charring, so I'm gonna go 95 and two. That is for this particular set of basswood that has a lot of glue. Your settings could very well be different. So I am on the honeycomb, which doesn't matter in the settings, but I am using the same piece of masked wood that I had for the P2. This is masked on the front and the back. The grain of the wood is vertical right here, and it is tamped down because it's a warped piece of wood because I already cut stuff from it. I'm going to take my laser module and I'm going to put the crosshair directly over where I need to measure and I'm going to close the lid. Okay, so up here at the top is the type. Whether you're working on the bed or a honeycomb, we're going to choose lasering on a flat surface. Unlike the P2 where you do have the option for the honeycomb, the M1 Ultra does not have it. I'm going to select this auto measure. And the best part of that is that it's done for you. For this one, it's going to choose distance. For the P2, you, you'll use your cameras and it will do the thickness of the material uh, or the distance if you're on the honeycomb. So once that's entered, we can tell the laser what to do. We hit the little flag and go to marking. Now this, we're going to put the crosshair in the upper left portion of the port, part of the wood we want to process. We hit the white button and then get that dot. That's our starting vector. We move the crosshair to the bottom rightmost portion, hit the uh, white button on the front of the machine and it'll create our rectangle. It's very easy. Don't worry that there's no cameras. I actually like this better because I'm more accurate. You have to hit end marking and done. And here's where I have a mini heart attack because look how tight this was. Now I did the math when I ran this uh, project on the P2, but ooh, that's, that's tight. Okay, so when we're looking at this now, you'd think that we're ready to go, but we're not. And you'll get bonus points if you know that these two are the only two things that'll process, engrave and cut. This stars one is not set to no output, which means just because you hidden it doesn't mean the system won't process it. You have to highlight it and hit no output. You're just turning off that slider. You can hide it again if you want. Now it says ignored over in the settings at the right. That's what we want. So for those of you new, you want to get in the habit of saving your files. Even if you don't think that you'll ever use this file again, I urge you to do so because problems can happen. We're working with machines. In the bottom right, this is optional, but you can hit framing. Framing basically, <laughs> look how tight this is. That shadow is me jumping because I was very curious if I'd done the math right. Anyway, framing just gives you an idea with zero power. Now we want to process. Processing, this screen is the most valuable thing. At the bottom left, it'll tell you how long this is going to take, and that gives you a great idea whether or not you want to hit start or not. Start sends the materials uh, design over to the machine. Pushing start on the machine starts the actual processing. If you're using the P2, you can see my engraving settings with the masking here are 20 and 200. It's only going to take about four minutes definitely different than the uh, nearly 12 on the M1 Ultra. Another question I get asked a lot is, what if I don't know if I have the right settings? Girl, it's okay, just stop it when the laser is actually away from one of the areas. So you can see, I'll stop the module by hitting the start button. I'll lift up the masking. Now, I will tell you, I wanted to make sure that I did a good comparison. This was for some someone who emailed me deciding whether or not she wanted the M1 Ultra or the P2. And so I just wanted to make sure that, hey, I give her the right parameters and it will engrave at the settings through the masking. 
So I just let it process all the way through. Now those tick marks are a lot lighter and the reason isn't the settings, it's because they're a lot thinner. So we have this massive view rule and that is because of the text, it's pretty bold. Look how tight that was. Did you see that? I literally was standing over this with a heart attack in place, like ready to go. Look at that. Now I let my air purifier take out the uh, fumes and then just pop it out. And these teeny tiny little hearts over here meant to put on the piece of wood right into the grid. Well, I'll clean that out later. So now before you remove any masking, always wipe. Now look at that. That's really low char. I was very impressed. Again, because I ran that twice at 90, I, uh, I, was, I was really impressed. The Most of the char actually came off of the P2 uh, side that was cut. So always get on the inside as well of any cutouts and then remove your masking. Look at that. I do use a pick tool um, on something as small as this, but always have Gorilla Tape handy because it's great for removing masking from uh, acrylic and even some woods. All right, so remove the back and you'll see there's not even any blowback on this actual masking, which is impressive. Again, when you dial in your settings and you do those test grids, oh, it just works so well. Okay, so this one is straight out of the M1 and the other one I'll show you out of the P2. It's a stark difference, but the price between these two pieces is, or price between these two lasers is pretty significant. All right, so if you want to make this, you can go to Shop Ruffles and Rain Boots. I put it on sale for a dollar. It's a great classroom valentine or just a sweet little gift. It does come with commercial use. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and follow for more crafting fun.